Welcome back to your hour. We're being joined now by Paul Rosales from Remax Realty Professionals. And we started talking last week about uh, the process of buying a home. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you want to kind of do a quick recap? Yeah, we talked basically where you start out. First step is you contact a realtor, preferably me. And then I put you in touch with the right loan officer who will be able to get you the right programs. Reason being, not all loan officers handle all different types of programs. So you want a loan officer who has a broad spectrum. Uh, of products to offer. Mm -hmm. uh, when you very first start thinking about buying a house, that's when you want to contact a realtor, even if it's a year or two out. Reason being is you need to get with that loan officer real quick because there may be things on your credit report that you don't realize are there. If your name is John D. Smith and there's another guy living in Massachusetts and his name is John B. Smith, some of his stuff may be pouring over onto your credit report and you may not want that on there. It may be a detriment to you. So you need to know that. And it's also important, leading up to the time in which you're going to buy a house, you want to make sure to stay in contact with a loan officer, check in with them every six months or so, mm -hmm. make sure everything's still okay on your credit report, make sure nothing's slipping over onto it, make sure you're not a, a victim of identity fraud and you didn't know it was happening. Yeah. That happens to a lot of people. It happens a lot, yeah. And then after that, once you're actually ready to begin looking, I help you find the right house. I, I give you access to all the properties on the MLS, updates as to when new properties come on the market, uh, when a property is going to drop its price. If you need special types of financing, I'll let you know which houses are eligible for the special type of uh, financing. Then we start going and looking for a house, and we go on ahead and we contract on a house. And now we're at the point where um, once we've gone on a contract, that part of the negotiations is over. Now it's time to get the home inspected. It's optional. You can get it or you can't get the home inspection. We always suggest that you do get a home inspection. Therefore, you're happier and more comfortable at closing and even after closing. Um, if you're getting a loan, the one type of inspection that you're going to almost always have to get is a termite inspection. Mm -hmm. and that generally runs about 35 bucks. Um, the other type of, uh, of um, inspection you can get is a general inspection and those are kind of good to get. They're kind of like a general overview of the property. Uh, the person who does that isn't going to be an HVAC specialist or an electrician or a plumber, but he knows enough to see if there's something that look, doesn't look quite right. Mm -hmm. Like if, if the flames aren't looking right in your heater, he may say, well, you might have a cracked heat exchanger there. You may want an HVAC uh, specialist to come in and take a look at it. And at that time, you can make the decision as to whether or not you want that checked out. Or if he thinks there's something faulty in the electrical, he'll say, this may be an issue. I'm not an electrician, but if you want to get it checked out, you can do that. So there's a variety of different things. You might have a question as to whether or not there's asbestos in the house, all kinds of different things that the general inspector will be able to usually pick up on. Now, if you find that there are lots of things that need to be fixed or mm -hmm. lots of things that need to be corrected and you've already negotiated the price, can you go back and renegotiate? Yeah, there's two points of negotiation in a contract. There's the point in which you actually sit down and you go under contract and then comes your inspection period. What happens is that when you get that inspection, you're going to get a written inspection for the termites and you're going to get a written inspection for the general inspector. And if you get specialists in there like HVAC or something of that nature, they're going to go ahead and they're going to give you a written report. Uh, the way we write it in the contract is once you get the written report in your hand, you'll generally have two or three days to put in writing what you want fixed. Mm -hmm. And then you can negotiate. You know, they're either going to drop the price on the house to, to placate you or they're going to agree to some of the repairs but not all the repairs or they might agree to all of them. It's just point of negotiation. Mm -hmm. Once we're past that point of negotiation and everybody's happy with, with what's going to be repaired, what's not going to be repaired, if anything needs to be repaired at all, once we're past that, there's not a whole lot for us to do. We're pretty much waiting on the loan officer to complete the loan. Um, your loan officer will call you up with various questions. They might need a little bit of paperwork here or a little bit of proof of this there. You just get those to them as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. That way we can get you closed out as soon as possible. Uh, the title company is also going to be doing some work. Generally their work is done pretty quick. The title company I like to use, Sunflower Title, they're pretty quick. Uh, they might have a few questions here and there, but not a lot. There's going to be about, towards the end, there'll be about a week or two weeks where really I don't have anything to do with it and the buyers of the house don't have anything to do with it because they've gotten everything to the loan officer. It's basically the last week or two the loan officer is completing everything. A lot of things happen behind the scenes that we don't see. Once that's completed, your loan is ready and we're off to closing. Um, when you go to closing, make sure you exercise, do your, 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 your finger calisthenics because you're going to be writing your name a lot, a lot, a lot of times. <laughs> there are lots and lots of documents for you to sign. Um, that pretty much wraps up what goes into buying a house. I mean, that's, that's kind of like the, the frame of what goes on. Um, mm -hmm. There can be some other things that happen within a transaction because each transaction is going to be different according to each house, each loan, 
uh, each individual selling, each individual buying. You may be able to close early, you may have delays. Mm -hmm. So there's a few things out there. So what I've kind of given is a general overview of what goes on with How the process. should happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in, in, a, in a textbook or cookie cutter type way of closing a house, that's what goes on with that. And like I said before, um, you know, if you're doing like a mobile home, those can be more complicated. Or really? if, oh yeah, yeah, especially the older a mobile home is, the harder they are to close. They, huh. Well, because prior to 1979, they didn't put HUD, HUD uh, numbers. Housing and Urban Development didn't require uh, HUD numbers to be stamped on these uh, mobile homes. If they don't have them, you're not getting financing. Really? Yeah, so if the, if the inspector goes in there and they cannot find the HUD number on it, and if you can't track down the HUD number assigned to that property, you're not getting the, you're, you're not going to get a loan on it. You'll have to go a different route of getting it. You may still be able to, to buy the house, but it's going to be different. And each, each transaction is different. Just like a new house is different than buying an existing home, is different than a mobile home. Wow. And if anybody has any further questions, just give me a holler at 550-HOME or 550-4663. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Thanks for joining us Thank today. Thank you. And we'll be back with movies, so stay with us.